Hopefully this is it. Oh, I see something happening. So hello all. This is Keto with the Keto Central Life. And I am coming to you today with a live on a topic that I posted on my blog at the end of last week. And that would be mindful journaling. Um, I just want to go over a few little things that were in the article, but really want to spend the time today in um, how we can cultivate that mindful journaling mindset to really get into it and habits that you might want to look into or create, work on, so that you can implement your mindful journaling. Okay? Just want to talk to the Lord real quick. Father God, you said we're one or two gathered, you will hear our prayer. I pray that all that are under the sound of my voice, either live or in video, you will give them the desires of your of their hearts, as your word says. Amen. So, mindful journaling. The post that I put on my website, which is posted in the comments there, which is the Keto Essential Life or KetoEssentialLife.com, um, is called the Art of Mindful journaling, a therapeutic escape from stress. And just a sort of quick overview of what's there before we get into these cultivating tips so that we can actually get started on our mindful journaling journey. So juggling work, family, and personal commitments can leave us really feeling overwhelmed in the day-to-day -day of what's going on. There's a lot happening in the world that literally is having impact at the kitchen table within a lot of homes in our country, in the States. Um, and you can be overwhelmed and feel drained by that. So we need to figure out ways to alleviate some of that stress um, that we can do within ourselves. And that's what mindful journaling is. So amidst all that turmoil, you can maybe find some calm, some peace, and uh, regain some of the control that you feel like you're losing with all of the stress that's going on in life today, just the day to day. So mindful journaling has become a practice that has been found to alleviate stress. So that's why I wanted to get into that topic in my, on my blog as well as give you some tips on this live. So what's mindfulness in general first? Um, it's the state of active and open attention to the present moment without judgment. A lot of times we are our worst critics for ourselves. And um, so this mindfulness is about paying attention to how you're feeling, what emotions you're experiencing in the moment without judgment. I'm angry right now, but I'm not judging whether I should be or not, I'm just acknowledging the feelings. So that's a quick and dirty of what mindfulness is. Um, in my blog post, I talk about journaling as a mindfulness practice. It helps individuals slow down, reflect, and engage with their thoughts and their emotions deliberately. A lot of times we try to run from our emotions, but in mindfulness and with mindfulness journaling, you are focusing on your feelings, mind and spirit, as well as your in that mind-body connection. So some of the areas I cover in the post are being aware of the present in the moment, emotional processing, gratitude journaling, because if you are writing down the positive things that you're feeling or have felt, you sort of push away the negative. So that helps with alleviating stress as well. Um, mindful breathing, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath, listening to your heartbeat, and start paying attention to what you're feeling emotionally but physically. You know, oh, I didn't realize my shoulder was hurting type of thing. There are some benefits to mindful journaling, um, that stress reduction, improving your mental clarity because you're being um, intentional 
with how you are working with and feeling, and writing down those feelings and emotions in the moment. Um, it enhances your self-understanding um, and emotional resilience because once you keep, you exercise that muscle of paying attention to how you're feeling in the moment, it becomes easier and more natural for you and then you can potentially redirect or whatever you need to to bring that stress level down. So, the mind-body connection. How do you get started with mindful journaling? Um, you're deepening your understanding of how your emotions manifest physically. Remember I said the mind-body connection. So you're setting the scene, where are you going to be in that space, um, you're breathing to help you pay attention to what's happening in your body. Um, we talked about gratitude journaling, encouraging, which encourages positivity. And um, I have a wellness planner. I have multiple planners because I'm a planner girl. <laughs> this is my wellness planner. And I keep my, um, I journal in here. So this is a, a different type of of journaling where you're just really flowing letting your thoughts flow at the moment so that is different from my um, from mindful journaling where you are being intentional and not just letting your thoughts flow onto the paper you're thinking about and assessing how you're feeling without judgment but acknowledging those feelings and then writing them so that's part of that mindful process. Um, emotional exploration, mindful reflection. So you're going back and looking at um, entries that you've put in your mindful journal or whatever journal you're using to practice mindfulness in a journaling sense and seeing what you know brought you up, what you know days that you were down, what was it, looking for trends, that kind of thing. And then setting intention. You want to manifest your positivity, so you want to have a clear goal in mind when you're sitting down to journal. So that's sort of an overview of what's in the blog that I posted. But I really wanted to get into cultivating mindful journaling habits today. So um, you might want to consider incorporating some of these habits to enhance the effectiveness of your mindful journaling process or your journey. So consistency. Consistency is very key in there you getting some bang for your buck in putting forth the effort that you put forth in for mindful journaling. Um, you want to establish a regular routine, whether it's daily, weekly, or if you're doing it as needed, however you're feeling, that type of thing. Um, you will, having a routine reinforces the habit so that it allows you to be, track, to track your progress over time and be more consistent. Choosing the right medium. So some people are tactile, they want to touch and feel the paper and, you know, do traditional journaling. That's me. Um, but you might have a digital uh, journal where you use that. So figure out what type of process you want to have and what works for you. Um, set intentions. Begin each journaling session with a clear intention, whether it's to release stress, gain a specific perspective on something, you want to express gratitude. Um, that helps your writing and amplifies your mindfulness uh, practice. So you want to have a clear intention before you start. Um, reflect and learn. So we talked about that a little bit in that you're going to periodically review your journal entries and see if you see trends, patterns, insights um, that can help you and maybe you can mitigate some issues in that manner. You want to embrace your creativity. So um, me, I like color. So I have colorful pens and I don't, my handwriting is not too good and I don't want to mess up my journal. So I buy the colored erasable pen. So if I mess up, I can just erase it. But I pick the color based on my mood at the moment when I'm ready to sit down and journal. And 
Um, this is my Faith Not Sight journal. And the way that it's set up, this is a uh, Bible journaling that brings you closer to God. And on my website, I'm selling these as well. But it's set up in such a way of what we're talking about, reflecting and learning. So, uh, just showing you some color. You don't really want to see how messy that is. But, um, no, I felt a certain way, so I picked up a certain color. But the way that I have it set up is you have your weekly face outlook so you start the week and you can either you can use this page how you like i have a scripture a different scripture down there for each page but you can use this as a vision board for the week um for your goals setting your intentions you can uh, see what your outlook is going to be then you have your faith daily and then towards the end of the week you have what I call Faith Weeklies. And what you're doing here is um, looking back at the week, what some of your entries were. So that's what I'm showing you how my journal fits into this very readily. Um, what motivated or excited me this week? What am I grateful for this week? What are my reflections for the week? So there are a set of several different questions at the end of a week to help you in that reflection, that reflect and learn part that we were just mentioning. Um, creativity, I use stickers in mine as well. Um, but this is my Faith Not Sight journal. Remember I said I have multiple journals, so <laughs> I showed you my wellness and this is my Faith Not Sight. Um, you need to practice non-judgment. So we're still talking about these mindful journaling habits. When you feel a certain way and you think, I shouldn't be feeling this, if with mindful journaling, you're acknowledging the feeling. You're not judging yourself for it or putting yourself down or thinking that you shouldn't be. You are acknowledging it, whatever that, that um, feeling is. So you're going to embrace a non-judgmental attitude towards your writing when you're doing mindful journaling. Allow your thoughts to flow without criticism. Then mindful prompts. Experiment with mindful prompts to give your journaling, to uh, guide your journaling sessions. So these are examples of prompts. So with, throughout my journal, I have different questions at the end of a week, questions at the end of a quarter. I have a mid-year um, assessment. And this is an undated um, planner, so you can start wherever you want, wherever you get that. I am going to do a live on, on walking you through one, this actual faith, not sight. But I um, wanted to mention that around the mindful prompts. It gives you structure, yet flexibility when you're trying to engage in mindful journaling. So I wanted to circle back to mindful breathing because that really does start you off in the beginning of uh, your mindful journaling session. Take a few moments to practice mindful breathing. Close your eyes, inhale deeply and exhale. So let's do that right now real quick. We're going to inhale and blow it out. One more time. And while you're doing that, with your eyes closed, you are paying attention and listening for your heartbeat. You're paying attention to what you feel from your toes, moving up your leg, your knees. I have knee problems, so I probably will stop there with some thoughts about whether they're feeling good or not today and how the weather is impacting them. <laughs> but just move right on up your body and assess how each body part is functioning or how it's feeling at that moment in time. Being in touch with the body and the mind together as well as your how you're feeling as with you emotionally how you're feeling along with how your body feels 
is really practicing mindful uh, journaling. So then you're going to write those things down in your journal. Um, mindful reflection. We talked about periodically reviewing your journal entries, um, looking for patterns and things that trigger you. So it is really important when you're talking about alleviating stress, because remember that's why we wanted to have mindful journaling in the first place, was to alleviate stress, to figure out what your triggers are. So mindful journaling can help you do that while you're paying attention to your mind and your body, writing things down, and then um, just making sure, seeing what the trends might be or what type of things are triggering you when you have a bad day and you've written that down in your, your um, mindful journal. Um, setting intentions. So remember, I'm just sort of reinforcing, reinforcing those things that are really important that you dig into if you really want to try doing this. And that's um, ending each session with a positive mindset. So you've already set your goal um, before you get started. And after you finished for that particular session, you want to think about the next day or the next week, depending on how often you're doing this, and set some intentions for how you want to move forward. So, how do we integrate mindful journaling into daily life? So beyond the scheduling of your sessions and the place, um, what the media, uh, what media you plan to use, tactile, regular journals, or um, a, a digital journal. You need to be thinking about mindful moments. So you want to take short breaks. So this is just day to day. We talked about what you need to be doing in your um, journal, whatever, wherever you're going to be writing these things down. But in your day to day life, being mindful can help decrease your stress when you're not actually journaling. So that's what I'm talking about. Mindful moments. Take short breaks during the day to jot down a few thoughts or express gratitude on a post-it. Just a little thing. These micro journaling moments serve as meaningful pauses to allow you to reset and refocus, especially if you're feeling some stress. You want to take a moment, you know, put your hands on the desk or wherever you are, the table, and the coolness of the touch of that table can help bring some calm to you. Um, and whatever you're feeling or comes to mind, jot it down somewhere. Those are mindful moments. And then uh, tra travel journaling. Um, and not necessarily like going on a trip, <laughs> um, but turn your journal into a companion for your life's journey. So that's the travel uh, I'm talking about. Document your experiences, capturing not only the sights and sounds, but your emotional responses to those things. Um, this mindful travel journaling can create lasting memories as well and deepen your connection with that being in the moment presentness. Um, mindful goal setting. Use your journal as a space to set mindful goals. So some of your goals might be to um, make sure you have a mindful moment. You capture a mindful, at least one mindful moment a day, but something else might happen and you want to capture that as well. That is great. But you really want to um, have your mindful moments, do your traveling, journaling, where you're jotting down things that you see or experience along the day while you're out and about. And mindful goal setting um, so you have a space set aside for that in my journal I know shameless plug but I want to, to give you examples so you have an idea I have annual face goals and you are going to set your goals for the year um, I haven't put everything in here yet but my word of the year is joy. 
um, then you're going to do quarterly faith goals. So this is sort of my goal setting. These are your quarterly goals. You have four quarters. Uh, what is my spiritual focus? How can I seek God? How can I love others more? How can I ensure a closer walk with God? So these, you know, this is a Bible journal. So these are some prompts as well as goal setting. So setting goals, mindful goals in your day-to-day -day life. You're going to be thinking about mindful goal setting, your travel journaling as you're moving about the day, and then the mindful moments that you want to capture. So, in the sphere of stress management, mindful journaling can be help you with your self-discovery and your resilience. Um, okay, D, I see your words intentional. I had that a couple years ago. Cool. Um, through that simple act of putting pen to paper, you can cultivate mindfulness, um, alleviate stress, start a fulfilling journey towards being more uh, holistic or a, a more overarching approach to your well-being because that's what we all need there's a lot of stuff going on in the day-to-day -day life your family you know um, we've had a lot of stress that's going on with the pandemic and then trying to recover from those things uh, it really changed all of us all of us were impacted in some way or another and it has some significant change. So that's an example of new stressors that you have to figure out how to manage. And this is one of the ways in which you can do that. Remember the power lies in the process. So with each mindful stroke of the pen, you're shaping a more mindful and balanced life. It's not, uh, it's really the process more so than the end result, having a mindful process in your approach to incorporating some of these things into your day-to-day -day life as well as in your journaling style can help with your personal growth, help with decreasing your stress. So that's why, one of the reasons why I thought this was very important. Um, let's see. We talked about embracing mindful journaling as a lifestyle, but as you're weaving that mindful journaling into the fabric of your daily life, you want to remember this is intentional. This is an intentional practice. It's not a quick fix. This is a, a different approach to how you deal with yourself, your feelings, your mind, your body, and spirit in how you are approaching life, really. It's more sustainable than, you know, a quick fix. Um, and I do diff different kinds of journaling. I have my Bible journal and uh, I do more mindfulness there as well as just studying the word. Um, and I have the Q Life Bible group if you'd like to join that. And I have a group of individuals that we use the Version Bible app and we read the word of God together. And uh, we just did the 21 day Dan fast in January. So um, that was very rewarding. But doing it together with like-minded individuals is also something that I think is very supportive. Um, You want to be have a sustainable approach to fostering resilience, emotional well-being within the present moment. That's really what mindfulness is. Remember, it's not about perfection, but the process, self-exploration, and embracing the present moment with an open heart and mind. So, actually, that's just half now. That's really what I wanted to cover to share with you all. Um, even if if some individuals missed it, 
it will be on Facebook as well as um, YouTube. So you can go to my ketocentrallife.com, www.ketocentrallife.com. Um, and I was just mentioning small groups. I have another blog post there regarding small groups of people getting together and uh, worshiping or just talking, being supportive of each other. So there, that's another post you might want to read. But right there in the comments, you see my um, tab that you can click on that takes you to my website where you can get my journal. Uh, and I have some other uh, goodies that go along with it that are available for purchasing, but you'll see my blog post and the other things that are on my site. If you go to um, my YouTube channel, you'll see quite a few different things there. We at the Key to Central Life on YouTube, as well as on my um, website are into diverse approaches to beauty inside and out. So trying to share with you things that help support your inside beauty as well as your outside beauty. Thank you, Dee. Um, so, that's really all I had. If anybody have any questions, you can let me know or you can, um, if you think about them later, you can go ahead and go to my site. You can go to my Facebook or my YouTube and put the comments there and I will definitely get back to you. But I appreciate the time, the attention, and the support. And I hope that you'll put some of these things into practice. I've started myself. So uh, if you have questions or thoughts about it and want to share your experience, please reach out. Bye, y'all. Kita with the Kita Central Life. Faith Not Sight as well. Bye.